it's pretty typical that horror franchises sometimes just go down in quality because eventually it's just like, well, they're still successful, so let's just keep doing them. A lot of people are aware of the VHS franchise. Now, I remember when the first one came out in like 2010 or 11, might have been 12, sometime around there, but I thought it was a great movie. It had a splash, but I wouldn't say it exactly took over the world. I think I saw it on Netflix and then maybe bought the DVD afterwards, but there were some cool segments in there. Taking two genres and mixing them together is not a simple thing, and it's genres that are already kind of tough to do are anthologies and found footage. They're either good or they're not. So to mix both is a daring task. But VHS was pretty damn good. There were some cool segments in there. And there were some segments in there that really bothered me. Like there was a couple that were staying in a hotel. And these people broke in the hotel filming them while they were sleeping. Just like taking their stuff. It was really uncomfortable. They also had some cool supernatural type stuff with a girl that was like this vampire bat person. It was great stuff. It was really fun, energetic. Then a few years later, they had VHS 2. Now, VHS 2 was incredible. I remember when VHS 2 came out, there was a segment at the end that had my jaw on the floor basically the entire segment. It was all about this church cult where basically Satan busted out of this thing at the end, and it just had my jaw on the floor. The cult stuff is always creepy to me because, to me, cults are just creepy. The fact that they can have control over people in such a way just kind of... Man, there's something about cults that are always going to be just so deeply under my skin. It was incredible. I think VHS 2 is, quite frankly, still the best VHS movie. If you haven't seen that one, don't worry. I'm not really spoiling anything, but you need to go watch it. There's other segments in there, of course, that are good, but yeah. So VHS 2 left me off on a huge high. Then comes VHS Viral, a movie so forgettable that, honestly, at the time of recording this, I can't even really tell you too much about it. It's not even that it's a really abysmally bad movie. I mean, it's not good, don't get me wrong. It's passable. But the fact is, I mean, the, we were at a trajectory going forward. We had a good movie that was on a good standing with a clear thumbs up to a really good found footage anthology movie with a double thumbs up. And then Viral just felt like, okay, well, we got to keep making them which is not a good thing. Most of us can kind of smell it from a mile away when another movie comes out simply because of the success of the franchise brewing or the success of a previous entry. And we can probably tell within 10 or 15 minutes that, yeah, this ain't cutting it. Things would kind of quiet down for a while, and then I think we got VHS 1994, which kind of took things back in a good direction, but we were kind of doing like this super time-oriented thing, and I guess that makes sense considering this is stuff that's based around VHS tapes, which I guess was a smart move, and it also can give you a lot of years to play with. You could do 94, 95, 96, so on and so forth. VHS 94 was good, not great. There were some good segments in there. I think the standout for me is the girl that is in the funeral home and the the power goes out and it's actually a very Romero-esque zombie scene that's pretty damn impressive uh, and very suspenseful as well. I know, I know the rat segment from VHS 94 is everybody's favorite, but hey, I'm a Romero guy and if you're a fan of this channel, you damn well know that. But I felt like VHS 94 kind of puttered out towards the second half and kind of left me wanting a little bit more. But all in all, it was definitely a step in the right direction. Then comes VHS 99. And again, I thought that this one was about the same in quality as 94. Starts off pretty good, gets a little bit better, and then stays at a passable rate. I really like the casket sequence that was in 99. And then that game show at 99 at the end is also really bizarre. I like it, but I want to like it a little bit more. But it's almost bizarre just for bizarre's sake, I feel. And doesn't really connect with me all the way. But all in all, I think we're on the right track. Then came VHS 85, and this is the one that to me, and albeit I seem to be in the minority, I felt like 85 was a clear sequel that was truly just made because of the success of the franchise. Obviously, these are coming out on Shudder, and they're probably doing really well on Blu-ray, so the consistency of the sales and attention of these is good. And don't get me wrong, I always want to see it continue if it's something that I have a lot of fun with. But VHS 85 was me finally saying, yeah, I think they're finally just saying we got to keep making these because they're successful. VHS 85 did not connect with me in any way, shape, or form. It was probably my least liked one besides Viral, which, you know, not saying a whole lot, but... 
I don't know, 85 for me just didn't cut it whatsoever. I didn't like the direction that they went in any of these and just didn't work for me. So I got to be honest, I was really bummed out about 85. I said to myself, oh man, this just this is not boding well for me. So I kind of gave up hope, to be honest with you, because I didn't, it's one thing if you like a segment from a se- uh, from the movie, but I didn't like one single segment from VHS 85. And then all of a sudden I hear about VHS Beyond. Well, I didn't really know what to make of it. I don't watch trailers anymore. I don't even know if there was a trailer that dropped for VHS Beyond. But basically, I just kind of waited for it to come out. And then finally, somebody commented on a video that I did and said, Hey, Christian, have you checked out VHS Beyond yet? So I was like, okay, I guess it's out. So I went on Shudder and watched VHS Beyond. And I'm happy to report to you. I'm so glad my faith is completely restored. VHS Beyond is now my second favorite VHS movie. I know, kind of sounds ridiculous to say, especially coming off of me saying I didn't like anything from 85. But now this one was really cool that took new elements it brought into the series and had a really cool idea. We're going to do stuff based around aliens. Of course, there's always the talk about aliens, alien sites, being able to see aliens, VHS tapes that have recordings of aliens in the sky. That was always a thing. I remember as a kid, hearing about all these Roswell sightings and things like that and aliens are always the thing that interests me so I was really into the idea what's so cool about VHS Beyond is there's these cool wraparound pieces that is done in the way something like Poughkeepsie Tapes does which if you guys know me you know that's one of my favorites Poughkeepsie Tapes almost has this documentary style to it that makes it really cool and almost have a little bit more of a I don't know, an authentic feel to it. But VHS Beyond is all about tales of people getting sightings from aliens. Except for one that is really, really bizarre. And honestly, doesn't really fit at all. But for some reason, I just think it works perfectly. The segment in VHS Beyond I'm talking about is about this woman that has this dog daycare center. Although when you get into here you find out that this woman is absolutely deranged and does incredibly cruel things. Without spoiling anything, you remember that movie Tusk? Yeah, it's as weird as it sounds. But the alien stuff in here, which is the rest of it, was incredible. There's a really cool standout I'd love to talk to you guys about. Now, the idea of coming in contact with aliens is obviously something that is terrifying, right? We've all seen movies like Fire in the Sky or Communion. Well, most of you have seen Fire in the Sky. Not enough of you have seen Communion, which is another thing. The movie Communion, or the book rather, gets mentioned in this, which is another like, hell yeah moment. That movie Communion with Christopher Walken, it's intense. Go see it. But there's a segment of these kids going out to do a skydiving thing for a big party or celebration they're having. And in the midst of going skydiving, an alien ship appears next to them and crashes their plane so where they all have to jump out. And while they're jumping out, this alien is basically taking people out. Talk about a situation that's already nerve-wracking enough, jumping out of a plane to go skydiving. Now throw in the element of an alien attack going on. But the reality is, all the segments in this were great. Even the first segment had a really cool feel to it. Now there was these people being abducted in this town. Now they found out that all these abductees were being taken to this abandoned home where they got tracking on it. So they go to this house, and this segment turns into this weird, almost demons-like segment. Yeah, the Lumberto Bavo movie. And it was really good. I guess what I'm saying is, I completely lost hope the VHS franchise, but VHS Beyond brought me back in a huge way, and I gotta say, yeah, I love Terrifier 3, but if you know me, you know what my bread and butter is. I love horror found footage, and to mix it with anthologies is just like a dream come true for me. So my favorite horror movie I've seen this year is definitely VHS Beyond. I really think you guys should check it out. It was bad to the bone. So yeah, I need to make an effort to talk about more movie reviews because as of late, I've just been doing strictly physical media, but I'm here to tell you, go check out VHS Beyond. I promise you, it's going to kick your ass. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.